I'm learning a lot refreshing my recollection by going through the Bible uh, is something I think we all should do uh, regardless of how much experience you have in the Word of God I don't have a tremendous amount of experience I have some uh, or if you have a lot of experience but definitely if you have no experience I don't think it's practical to do it when you're first getting started alone I think you I think you need to walk through it with someone who can kind of share with you um, the landscape of the Word of God I think it was meant to be that way as well I think you need a teacher I think you need the I think you need the ministry uh, I think you need a pastor I think you need a pastor teacher think you need those people I think you need someone that comes in from a prophetic point of view from an apostolic point of view because you need the apostolic to learn how to set things up you need the, you need the prophetic point of view to be able to look at it the right way to kind of keep from having as many challenges as you're going to have because you will have challenges in your walk with God. We all do. I know I do. Some of the mistakes that I made, and I can't name them all, everything from trying to comfort people the wrong way to blowing money the wrong way to you know, losing my temper as a man as a human being and misinterpreting people uh, I can go on and on and on about some of the many mistakes I've made uh, in a lot of ways I've lost credibility with some people because of my actions not because of theirs but because of mine I have blown it but God. See, human beings tend not to be very forgiving. I was listening to someone talk about the relationship that Martin Luther King had with what was aptly known as the black community. And in the quote-unquote black community, uh, a lot of people at, when he was alive did not like him. He was a very intelligent man. Uh, spoke in his 30s, spoke in a very intelligent way and um, you know, he wasn't the neighborhood guy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> in fact, the more standout figure at the time was Malcolm X and and you know, in some respects, even Megger Evers, before he got shot on his front porch with his wife in the house, or in his front yard, I believe, with his wife in the house. You know, going through the things that you go through and having the experiences that you have and going through the challenges and that sort of thing is part of life. Unfortunately, like I was saying, people are very, humans are very unforgiving. But God. You know, I think about some of the great leaders like Zulu of Zulu Nation. He didn't start off Zulu Nation, he started off Zulu. And I believe at the time, and I might be wrong on the number, but I think there were eight tribes that he solidified. Think about the Yoruba tribe. Um, I believe they were great negotiators. Um, I think about some of the things, stay with me here. I think about some of the things that changed the overall picture of what became the continent of Africa. Was that before it was called the land of the blacks, 
It was called Kush, Ethiopia. It was called, you know, I forget all the tribes. I, if you're interested, you can go on my YouTube channel from some years back, about seven years back. And I talked about a lot of the tribes. You know, people, humans have their own reason for doing things but God. See, humans want things the way they want them, when they want them. But God wants us to get things the way God wants us to get things. So in the conclusion, what I'm going to share with you is some of the things that we bring on ourselves. Because there is no bypassing God. One of the challenges is that we don't want to take responsibility for ourselves. But if my people were called by my name and simply humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways. Again, very consistent, and again, this is, that's, that's, you know, later on, but that didn't start there. That started right here. Leviticus chapter 26. Let's go over it. Verse 14. 26, 14. It says, But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments. Now keep in mind what we discussed in 2526. And again, this is for my kids, my grandkids, and those, uh, my brothers and sisters in Kenya, and those who call me, whatever you want to call me. God bless you. I want you to get something out of this. In Leviticus chapter 26, on our journey from Genesis to Revelation, Verse 14, it says, But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments. Do you remember what the commandments were? We can go back. Prefer not to. Keep my Sabbaths, Jubilees, sell art, buy from your neighbor. From your neighbor. Stay in your community. Not community of black folks, not community of white folks, not community of the Jewish folks. In the community of believers. By thy neighbor, do my statutes, uh, do my judgments, and dwell safely in the land. And the land will yield its fruit if you do everything from 2 to 18. But also in verse 9, in verse uh, 22, sowing the eighth year and that sort of thing. And we talked about all those things, how they work. Sowing in the eighth year. I mean, you've been eating well off the sixth and the seventh year. You've been giving. You've been setting up your legacy and, and that sort of thing. And then you start sowing again in the eighth year. And you start eating again in the ninth year. If you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if you, that's commandments are number one, and if you despise, shall despise my statutes, his ways of doing things. So, walking in forgiveness, doing the peace offering, um, the trespass offering, um, the sin offering. At this time, at this time, there is no more offering for sin today. Other than confession, that is the offering. You know, relying on the propitiation of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, who sits at the right-hand side of the Father. These are the statutes. So we talked about the judgments. We talked about the statutes. And if you shall despise my statutes, in other words, and despising something means you're actually walking in pride to it. I don't need to do that. This is Old Testament. No, these are the principles behind 
what is spoken of later on. Jesus came, came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. Nothing missing, nothing broken. It doesn't make the law, the law is the taskmaster, but it doesn't make it invalid. These are the details behind the decision making which made Jesus the, perf the perfect sacrifice. Understanding sacrifice is love. For God so loved that he gave his son who fulfilled the law. These are just the details. Verse 15 and if ye shall despise my statutes or your soul, abhor judgments. Judgment comes. Judgment is in the iniquity. You know, a lot of people want to conflate iniquity with trespasses. The iniquity is the end result. Where the prices are paid. Boy, do I know that. Because I've paid some pretty prices. Pretty. Well, not so pretty prices, but I've paid some prices. So that ye will not do all my commandments that ye break my covenant. Now, I'm going to stop there in this section, and I want to show you some of the things... Uh, I want to point out some of the things that we have. So, so when you don't hearken, listen, when you don't do the commandments wrapped around just love, when you, when you despise his statutes, when you, when your soul, your mind abhor his judgments. In other words, there are, there are judgments that feel good because you're vindicated and there are judgments that make you feel bad because you are found out to be short. You have to love it all because that's where the growth is. When you break the, the agreement, there are results. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna read them all. Well, we got a little time. We'll, we'll read quite a bit of it. In Leviticus chapter 26, verse 16, it says, "I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning art, art uh, ague. I don't know what that is. That shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain." For your enemy shall eat, and I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies that they that they hate you shall they they that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee. Now, before I keep reading, I know a lot of you are going to say, "No, I'm covered by the blood." It doesn't mean you don't have to have experiences. When you make a decision, if you decide not to be obedient, God can cover you with his grace. He can cover you with his mercy. But it doesn't mean that you you will not have some experiences from not being obedient to doing what God told you to do. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 14. You can, we can all say, Father, I'm sorry. I missed it. 
Sometimes you don't do anything wrong and you still have to go through experiences. This is a tough this is a tough conversation to have, I understand. And again, study it for yourself. I'm only putting it out there. And mostly doing reading. And I think what happens is people disagree with or don't like the position and don't want to be honest about sometimes the decisions that we all make sometimes take responsibility for the decisions that we make as imperfect people. Those decisions affect other people as well as affect us. And the quicker we take responsibility, the better it is for us. I'm not going to read too much more into that, but I'm going to read verse 40, where it says, If they shall confess their iniquity, and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary to me. This is consistent with many parts of the Bible, one of which I quoted at the beginning of this taping or this video. Our only responsibility with being in God's will is confession. And dealing with how to repent, how to turn away from that which we've done wrong before we've had to pay the price. Because there's a process. If you do it before you have to pay the price, there's a process. If you do it after you have to pay the price. Verse 40, chapter 26, verse 40. If they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me. Doesn't this show we still have responsibility? Verse 44 through 46, and we'll close here. And yet for all that, once you've done this process, dealt with your iniquities, iniquities are the prices we've had to pay. The trespasses are the mistakes that we've made and the trespasses of our fathers were the trespasses that we were born into, our proclivities, if you will. We, 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 if we can just get the understanding that walking in God's presence is much more desirable than trying to manufacture our desires, just allowing God to work on our hearts through these processes. And then this is what he says in 44 through 46. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them. For I, the Lord, their God, but I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God, I, the Lord. These, the statutes, judgments, and laws, which the Lord made between him 
and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses.